So if you look at any design or any layout design, I can almost divide it into, I'm going to divide it into three categories. I'm going to call the one classic design. I'm going to call the other one uh, pop art, pop design. And I'm going to call the last one grunge design. So there are three basic areas of design. Classic, pop and grunge. Now if you look at classic, classic means traditional, it's classic. So a classic design would be, you, for, it, it could be for a magazine layout, it could for, be for a brochure, it could be for any design. Classic means picture on top, headline, body text, and logo at the bottom. That's classic, right? Pop art, when you look at pop, it is, pop art is when there's a lot of color involved. So pop art, you can have circles, so the background becomes important. You can have uh, uh, stripes, but there again you've got the picture. Now the picture can be a cutout picture, and the text can be a uh, skew with shadow. So now what it starts happening is it's not classic anymore, it's busy. It's got a drop shadow, it's got outlines, the background has got patterns and circles and and it lends itself. Okay, I'll tell you now what lends it. And the third one is grunge. And it's got the same thing as classic, but what tends to happen if you put the picture on top, you could have a faded edge or a textured edge fading into the background and then there's your heading and your text and your logo. But what happens is here, have you noticed here, background becomes textured. Background is textured. Here, background is colorful. There's no texture. So it's linear lines, but there's circles and color and very colorful. Whereas this one just becomes very textured and grainy. And this one is classical. It doesn't matter if the background is plain. It's usually plain. It's either white or blue or plain. This is very plain or simplified. So why would you choose classic? Why would you choose pop? And why would you choose design when you're doing a layout? What would be your considerations? Well, it depends on the client. So you're always going to give a client, 100% of the time, you're going to give a client a classic layout design or proposal. But if you know about pop and you know about grunge, you give him an alternative. If you want to be, if you want to be creative, you give them the two alternatives. And if he sees those two alternatives and it's relevant and you can sell it to him, you're going to stand out. Because everybody's going to follow the classic. So if you look at certain, uh, uh, if you look at certain promotions of certain retailers, if you walk through the mall, sometimes they have a promotional drive. And then the promotional drive just stands out. And sometimes they have a promotional drive and it's so classic it just doesn't stand out. So can you see the normal drives is when they have an Easter drive. It's always so classic. Easter bunnies, prices, Easter eggs. Nothing stands out. But notice now if Woolworths has a promotional Easter drive. It's always going to look different. Whether it's going to be color, colorful, whether it's going to be textured, whether it's going to be... Uh, there's some element about it that's going to look very design-wise good. Right. So what I'm saying is... So what do you keep in mind when you do that? Classic is really focusing on getting the message across. Just simply getting the message across. It's not so important about how colorful it is, how textured it is, it's about the message. And that's why, if you look at pop art, it's, it's really about the message, it's, it's really about fun. So let's say, for example, if you're doing some, a party advert, 
It's going to be a, a promotion for a party event. Cape Town Festival. You do, do get Cape Town festivals or music festivals or the band is coming to town. They'll never do a classic. They always want to show some fun or some element to it. So they'll start using elements of pop. They'll make the background colorful. They'll turn the picture skew. They'll, they'll bring in a lot of color. They'll pr put in a lot of some bursts or whatever. They'll, they'll tend to go pop. Slightly, I'm not saying totally pop. Slightly pop. We'll go totally pop. And then in between there'll be some variations of pop. For, because it's about fun, it's about excitement, it's about party, we will put a tinge of pop to it. Now if you've got grunge, what are you uh, trying to achieve in grunge? You're trying to make it moody. So what products are good, or adverts, or products, or things are good to create a moody feel? Feel. So it's this, this perfume. Have you noticed the men perfume or women's perfume? The way they pose. The way it's dark. The way it looks slightly textured. It's moody. So it tends to be for moody products. Okay? So you can, so I'm going to just say a typical thing here is perfumes where they use models. A typical thing here is festivals, music festivals. A typical year for classic is retail promotion price. I'm having a special. You got that? So I want you to now to first focus on the classic. Because I'm going to be teaching you pop and grunge. But pop and grunge is very creative and you can fall off the bus if you don't know your design principles. People can say that looks horrible because that creates emotion. If I just give a straight Message. Let's give a classical message. Come to my birthday party. Now I'm going to give you a pop one. Come to my birthday party! <laughs> now I'm going to give you a grunge one. Uh, I'm having a birthday party. I'm turning 50. <laughs> Does, does, that's moody, that's fun, and that's just come to my birthday party, it's going to be fun, I'm turning, turning 50. That's the message. Can you see the, the, the three effects? Now what is going to create a response is these two. So when you give that to the, to the client, you are running a risk. So we're first starting off with a classic. Let's get the classic right. right. Now I've, see, I've on the phone, I've given you... Uh, uh, three pictures of uh, of eagles. Did you see that? Uh, who's been on the? You, you've been on the group. You saw that? No, you, you're not on the group, are no. you? Are you on the group? No. You should be on the group. I should put you on the group. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll put you on the group. So what I'm saying is, the the heading is just a simple book cover, and the simple book cover is called birds of prey and there's an author and can you see each three is different designs called birds of prey with the author and guess what each three works is that all right for a book cover would you say that's okay for a book cover you're looking at on your phone eh? yes I'm are, are you saying that's all right for a book cover yes would you say that's all right for a book cover yes. Would you say that's all right for a book cover? Yes. And would you say this is all right for a book cover? Yes. And would you say that is all right for a book cover? Yes. So all three applies to the principles that I want to start pointing out to you. So eagle. So what is the difference here? This is this is an owl. It's not an eagle. If you think of birds of prey, did you know an owl is a bird of prey? Yes. They eat rats as well. But when you think of birds of prey, you don't think of an owl, you think of an eagle. But yet, it's a bird of prey. Mm. So, it immediately, it tells you also more about the book. You see what, what I'm saying? Uh, and and um, uh, uh, let's look at the other one. Uh, this one says bird of prey and it's a typical eagle. right? And I've used another typical eagle on the top one. But what is the difference in terms of design of the top bird 
ego one and the bottom ego one. Those two. So the difference is, if you look at the image, what's the difference in the image? In the image, the bird is flying up, and here the bird is flying down. Can you see? You, it, you're seeing the wings. It's, it's like it's soaring down. You're seeing it from the bottom. Here you're seeing it sort of, it's like the wings are up. Here the wing is, the main wing is up, here the main wing is down. And the other one, you don't even have wings. The, the, the birds of prey here is positioned on the top right. And look at the size of the bird of prey. The bird is bigger than the birds of prey wording. Right? You look at this one. Which is bigger, the bird or the heading? The heading. But it wasn't noticeable. Now I, that I put your attention to it, you see it's quite noticeable. Oh yes, the, the bird of prey wording is slightly bigger than the bird. And the other one, and the wing is important and it's showing up. The other one, the birds of prey is slightly smaller and the wing is also important but the wing is showing down. And then the third one, there's no wings. Okay? So why I'm showing you this is because the whole purpose when you're doing the layout. So if I went and I said to you guys, here's the layout size. It's got to be a book cover. Now you know a book looks more or less portrait. Right? Not too long, but more or less portrait. You look at most books. Most books are portrait. You agree? Right. Now, somewhere there's the author. So if you look at, if you are dividing it, because remember what we said is that in design, you've got four basic elements to look at. And I mentioned to you last week that the most important one is what? Text. Right? And the second most important one is? Image. Right? And I'm putting the top and down because I want to refer to almost as the four, if I have to, if I have to put it like a little man. And I've got to put the four. I'll put their text and I'll put their image. And then I'll use the other two. Because they're all important color and background. So, I'm put, because I'm, what I'm saying is, as long as you've got one hand and a foot, you can function. But if you've got no hands and just got feet, you can't really function. So, I'm just trying to, 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 to show you. The importance, they are hierarchy. So even in design, there's a hierarchy. What is more important than this, more important than this, more important. So there's a hierarchy. So we look at the text, image, color, and background. Those are the four important areas. Now let's see what we're going to be. Uh, so I always refer to it or go into depth on it. So I'm going to go a little bit depth in color, and I'm going to go a little bit more in depth in, in the color. But what am I trying to to when you're looking at the design layout, you first go, you're going to have to look at the two, uh, 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 what I call, and, and I've also put it onto your, onto the your notes here that I'll give you. You first got to look at the shapes and then the elements of design. Now the elements of design that I'm focusing on is color and tone. So the elements that I'm focusing on elements. I'm focusing on tone and I'm focusing on color. The shape of the design or form. Form and shape is the same thing. Form or shape, I'll call it the shape, also known as the form. That is your heading and your picture, in other words your image. The tone and the color are elements of the design. If I put color there, let's say I put blue there, and I make a tone of the blue, dark to light, I put a gradient full, blue, and that's what I present. There's my art, a tone of blue, I want to sell it. You can't sell it, why? Because there's no form, there's no shape. What is your shape going to be? The most important shape is your text, the heading. Birds of prey. So if I put that background color and I just put their birds of prey, then already you've got an idea. It's about birds. So it's very important. That's the most important thing. Because if I said birds of prey on a color background with tone, it's the shape. 
But if I put an image next to it as well, it reinforces the text and the image gets reinforced. So now I'm going to put a text and image in there. So I'm going to now start letting you think of text and image in this way. Remember, an image can be a drawing, an image can be an icon, an image can be a photo, an image can... There's lots of different images you can use. Right? A circle is an image. A geometric shape is an image. It's a form. It's part of this group. So, text, if I draw a circle, it's a circle. But if I put a T, it's text. Right, so there's a relationship between text and image. And I'm going to call it a marriage. Or a relationship like a marriage. So, if you go through life just as text, you're going to be okay because people are going to understand you. You're still going to get the message across. Because text is important, it gives the message. But, and if you go uh, in life through as an image, people will start, can decipher it. You're the image of a bird, you're the image of a cat. They can still say cat, bird. So it's, you can still go through life like that without having to say cat or to say bird. But it's best when you do the two together. So if you say birds of prey and you're showing you're a bird of prey, then the two gets better. But you can't be two things at the same time. So it's how you place the two together. It's how you place the heading together with the image. It's how they get placed together. This is where the marriage comes in. Because one will start dominating the other subtly without losing the harmony. So when there's a good marriage, we call it harmony. Now remember, in any design, in any layout, if you say that's a good design, you would say, yes, it's a good design. Why? Because there's harmony. All the elements work together. There's harmony. They work together. So look at the promotion, look at the layout, and ask yourself, is there harmony? Do they work together? Do you think there's going to be harmony in this pop and fun one? No, you're going to look twice. What's important? Where's the hierarchy? Why is this color here? You're going to like, look like that. Whereas in a classic, it's simplified. It's easy. It's harmony. It's almost like the Apple logo. When you walk into an Apple store and you see an Apple logo, oh, I'm in heaven, there's harmony. <laughs> Have you been to, in, to an Apple store before? Now think of it, you're going to Incredible Connection. There's a laptop, there's a laptop, it's busy, it's fun, it's busy. It doesn't, it creates harmony, but it, it doesn't really create harmony. You've got you to find on, okay, yes, it does create harmony. Look, they put all the pieces in this row, and then they've got another row there where they put all the screens. So it is harmony, although I looked around a lot, there was still a sense of harmony. But you go to an Apple store, the, it's big, the pictures, and... The logo is small and, it's, and they just draw you into the front. And there's all the stuff. You take your credit card out. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm just not trying to say to you what you're trying to create in your... You want to create harmony, right? And the harmony is created by the positioning of the image and the text in terms of size and where you position it. Now, you can't always position it on the same place. Because no two people are like. So if you look at that design that I've done, you would have noticed that the heading is placed differently depending on the wing and the size. You saw that. So that birds of prey, that heading and that bird looks like they married. There is harmony. It's not like they're away from each other. And the way that the wing sort of envelopes it there. The one is not more dominant than the other one. But if someone, something has to be more dominant, then it has to be the text that is more dominant because the text is what's going to give the message. So if you, you, if you look at the two together, you must see it as a unity, as a harmony, as a unity. You mustn't say, oh, this one has been neglected and that one is too dominant. There has to be a good size fit and, the, and they must complement each other. So would you say that 
that complements each other. Yes, he does. Let's look at the top one. Right. So, I've got no choice. If I had to put it over the wing, then I'll be starting to clash with the wing. I could say then the wing is, the, the text is now clashing with the wing. So I'm putting it there on the top right, and it's still close enough to the bird, so that it still looks like it's together. The way it's positioned. I'm not putting it small at the bottom there. And then you've got this open sky. So can you see, if you look at the background, you realize that the text and the image of the bird is more important than the color and the background. Yet, the color and the background adds to the harmony. Right? It does. But that's not the first consideration you have to do. The first consideration I have to do is, if I'm going to place the bird there, how big am I going to make the text and how am I going to make the text unite with the bird? So, I've got to look at it two separately before I bring it together. So, let's say I'm just going to type in the word bird and, I've got a, and I'm going to have a bird. Then, this is how you would create harmony. It's, you've got to consider the size, because I'm talking about the shape and form now. You've got to consider the size and you've got to consider the position. Right, so after the classes, I'm going to go say, go find a picture of a bird of prey. And call it bird of prey. And the first word you're going to see is birds of prey. So we don't put emphasis on the word of, because it's less important. And prey is important. But which is more important, birds or prey? They're more or less the same weighting. But birds is a little bit more stronger. Okay? So... I'm going to say now, if you've got the word bird, and you've got a bird, how are you going to position it? So when it moves closer, oh, there's marriage happening, because you are moving it now closer. That's one way, the position, they're closer. Then the size, oh, the one is not smaller than the other one. But one can be but smaller than the other. And then you're going to say, yeah, but if I'm going to make it small, smaller and I make it overlap there, it's going to unite. So by overlapping, positioning, and sizing, you are going to solve this problem of marriage and creating harmony. Just by taking the text and positioning it with a picture. Now, most of the classic styles of layout is where they put the heading first. Then they look at where the bird can come as secondary. And then they put the bird as a background. And somewhere the bird is now going to be married in there. And then they, that's how they marry the two and they put the heading there. And then they start off with the rest of the text and the logo at the bottom. Because they're marrying the two. So you can say birds of prey there. But again... Most of the focal point when you're looking at a design, where is the focal point? There. Middle, top is the focal point. Now, you don't create the focal point by putting the word there and then the word birds there. No, you keep it away. You first put the bird and the wording and get your size and your position right. Okay, it's going to come like that. The bird is going to be smaller there. You don't think of space where it's going to go in. You just get the bird and the position. And once you've got it right, you decide how you're going to crop and frame it so that it falls somewhere in the top middle. Right? And in this case, it's covering the whole book. So now, the goal is, if it's covering the whole book, how are you going to position it to cover in the whole area? Now it becomes important on where you're positioning it. Because most positions are on the middle, moving towards the top. But can you see, I didn't first put in the one and then put in the other one. I took the bird and I took the, the image of the bird and I first worked it together. In terms of outline. Just simple outline. And this is where you do your thumbnails and take your thing. You look at your bird picture and you start drawing it and how am I going to place it next to my text. Once you're happy with it and you place it where it's going to be placed, then comes your elements of design. Now you're going to use your elements of design, which is tone and color. And the purpose of, of tone and color 
is also to create harmony, but there's one step further that it wants to create besides harmony. It wants to create harmony, but every design you also want to create depth. Depth. So depth is a bit about contrast, because it creates depth. So whenever a, 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 a image starts clashing or looking what we call bland is when there's no depth. It's all one tone on one tone. There's no depth. There's no pushing forwards and backwards. There's no contrast. So, but you can't do it too much or too little or it's got to be at the right spot because the depth is what's going to help you marry and create the harmony. Right. So if you look at these... Uh, the, 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 this design, I'm going to now speak a little bit about creating the depth. Because the shape has already, by the positioning of the shape, we've already created a certain amount of harmony. But now with tone and color, we're going to create that depth now. To create further harmony. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, you've got to understand tone and you've got to understand uh, uh, how color tone is related. So let's just first understand tone. So, before we look at color, let's look at just simple tone. Now, when we talk about tone, what does tone mean? Tone means the range of light and dark. And this range between light and dark is called tonal value. The values. The values is the range. Right? So if you have a, a, a plane image that is like a reverse image, if I take a circle and I color this a solid black and I make the, that background white, and I do the opposite here. I make the background black and I make the, the absolute circle white. What I've got then is I've got two colors defining a shape. But it's only two colors. There is no, it's only two tones. It's a two tone the picture. It's a two tone. Black and white. White and black. Two tone. What tends to be two-tone? If, if we look at images, we go down this road of images. Have you noticed that a symbol of a logo or an icon tends to be two-tone? If you think of an icon, the Apple icon, it's two-tone. They place that Apple icon, I'm just saying in general, the logo is two-tone. There's no shading in the logo, or in the logo symbol. Okay, so again, if you look at logos and the symbol or the icon of logos, it tends to be two-tone. One color, strong outline, no tonal values in between. Do you agree? Right? So if I decide to, to design a logo, and you're going to do a logo of an eagle, and you're going to do the shape of, or the head of the eagle, no, you're going to try and keep it as simplified as possible and try to make it a two-tone if you're doing it as a logo. And that's where the silhouette comes in. Trying to create a silhouette of, a of, the, of the image. Okay. Now, tonal value means... So, if tone means the level of light and dark and tonal value means the ranges in between, then you can have... Let's say uh, you start with dark. Usually, you start with dark. And then you have a range of blocks until you get white. So there's your two tones. And your in-between tones is how it becomes from, from the dark to the light. And there is now the values. You, 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 you're going lighter, 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 lighter. Now if you look at your grayscale, I'm not going to go too much in color because I'm not going to decide on color. Is where, is, where is the black and the white sits here? What sits in the middle of the two?
what do you call the one that sits in the middle? Black. Which we call gray. Gray. Oh, with an A. I think it's with an A or E. It's A. Gray. You spell gray with an E or an e, A? I think it's E. Spell gray with an E Y. Okay, let's spell it with an E Y. So I think some people spell it with an E Y. Doesn't matter. So the middle point is gray. Black, white, gray. So if you think of your tonal value, that gray is a tonal value of black. Gray. What is, if I give you another uh, uh, tonal value of the color red, what, if you had the midpoint tonal value of red, what color do you get? Pink. Pink. Because remember, that's the most outer value, that's white. In between is a mixture of the two, then you get to pink. You with me? Right, so it's like you keep on adding white, 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 white. Now, when we start, we, let's say we start with black, and we get black and white, and we get gray, scales of grays. Now, you will know how many scales of gray there are. How many scales do you think, on the computer, do they give you as shades? Because remember, you can say 50% gray, you can say 40% gray, but how many little grays do they have? Is it 256? Two, two, five, five. You know the scales of red RGB. There's yes. two, five, five. So there's two, five, five ranges of red, blue and green uh, RGB. Yes. R. So if yeah. it is two fifty. Yeah. Then if you take B blues, two fifty five. Colin, how many? Have you noticed two fifty five? Two fifty six. I'm not too sure. Yeah. But and if you look at the same, if you look at the the the. the the, the, when they talk CMYK, they talk about the percentages or the mixtures. But every color has got that range of blocks that they choose from. 255 shades of gray. Mm. And, every, and now people say there are, what's it, seven shades of gray? What's the movie called? <laughs> oh, yeah. um, what? 50 shades. 50 50 shades. shades. No. no, there's not 50 shades of gray. <laughs> there is... 255 shades of grey. Confirm because I'm putting it on a video. But that's if, if I remember correctly. So there's not 50 shades of grey. There's 255 shades of grey. So there are lots of tonal values. But now here's where the light and the dark comes in. Because if you take it to, to every single colour. Let's take the, 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 the next colour. If you take, say, the red that we spoke of, or, or the blue that we spoke of, and we do all the colors until we get white. This first red is what we call the purest color. It's the most vibrant red. It's the most purest color. It's red. Now you can go red to black in that direction. There's your black. And then it gets shades of black until it reaches the purest red. Okay, so now you start getting burgundy and dark red, you see? Because it's now dark red. It's going from black to the purest red. And then from the red, it goes down to the white. And we start talking about, when we talk about pastels, we're talking about going to white. And if we're going to the black, we really, we talk about shades. We tend to talk about shades. When you add black, you talk about shades. If you're adding white, you talk about pastels. Things like that, right? But it doesn't matter about the terms. I'm not going to in color. I just want to show you that there's the scale. And if you look at your, if you look at your CMY color when you add in color with Coral Draw, have you, where would your purest color sit? Where does black sit? It sits here at the bottom. You know that little square when you want to choose color? White sits here. You agree? White to black sits there. White to black. And then the colors start mixing here. And this is the purest one. Going down, the purest is mixing with black. Going that way, the purest is mixing with white. Going in the middle, where there is now the blends of the black and the white, going to a bit of the color being added. That's how you spot your colors or your tones. Now here you can start getting tones of that purest color, which is then on your color wheel. And your purest colors, your colors of the rainbow, it's along this wheel. Okay, so now that's how you choose the colors. Now, how does it affect harmony and how does it affect depth? Right. So, 
the way you create color, the way you create harmony. First thing, you've got to create harmony, and then you've got to create depth. So the easiest way to create harmony, right, is to pick out the dominant color in your photograph. Right? Pick out the dominant color. And then you've got to cho choose, anything will work with it, either black or white. Black, if you put a word on a, on, a, on a text and it's white or black, it will work depending on where you put it. But now to create a little bit of harmony, you can put in your heading a little bit of the tone that's dominant in the picture. So if, the do tonal, if there's something dominant in the picture, you can bring that color into your heading. So let's see, how did we do that? So my choice of the birds of prey there, what did I do? I picked out the yellow. You see how I picked out the yellow because it's not white. It's a shade of yellow. You agree? It's a, and that shade of one color is called uh, a, a mono, you can call it monotone. Mono meaning one color and tone meaning there's a tonal value. So you can call it monotone or monochromatic. Chromatic means color, mono means one. So it's choosing one color and a tone of one color. So you can call it monochromatic or monotone. Monotone meaning one color. Black and white is a monotone of black. Any other color is a monotone of that particular purest color. So this purest color could have been yellow. If you look at the purest color of that, that could have been yellow. And now it's a shade or a tone of yellow. It's got a tonal value of yellow. Now I picked it up from the dominant color here. So if you look at the dominant color, there's this very dark Shades and the very light shade. So I'm looking in between the dark and the light of the picture. Now if you look at this, the picture of the eagle, the dominant tone, is the dominant tone light or is the dominant tone dark? Because when you're starting with tone, you're looking at the light and dark. So this dominant color of this picture is dark. You agree? The dominant color of this picture is the dark or light? Light. Light. Now compare the three. Compare the three. What would be the dominant color of the middle one? It's sort of your mid-tone. It's neither dark nor very light. So it's mid. Can you see that? The whole image, if you had to look at it at once, it's neither dark nor light. Mm. So you always, when you're looking at something, you are looking at tone, you are looking at how dark is it, how light is it. Right. Now, even in pop art, it tends to be more light. And in grunge, it tends to be more dark. It doesn't have to, but I'm saying it tends to be. Don't you think moody colors tend to be dark? And vibrant colors tend to be light. You agree? So what am I looking at first is, I'm looking at light and dark as a means to create harmony. So I'm looking at tone as a means to create harmony. By looking at this range of light versus dark. And I'm looking at, in terms of uh, 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 color and black and white. Because black and white is no color, so it can give me the range of light and dark. So if I did put like everything, just a filter of black and white, I can see how dark and how light it is. Okay, so now, if it's overall, if it's overall tends to be dark or overall tends to be light, it tends to create harmony. But as soon as it's very dark here, very light here, very dark here, very light here, it's too much light and too much dark. So how do you approach it? I want you to think of it because having light and dark and contrast can create a nice harmony feel. But as soon as there's too much contrast on certain areas, it can clash. So how do you, how do you make sure that it all harmonizes? So yeah, here's the little trick I'm going to give you. You've got to be aware that when you work with tone, that there are basically three ranges. There's the very light range, 
there's the very dark range, and then there's the mid range. So when you look at the picture, ask yourself, is it very dark, is it very light, or is it mid? It tends to be mid. Right? Now, if it's mid, if the picture or the image at the back tends to be mid, you can choose whether you want to make this wording black or white. You'll still read it because it is mid. So let's, let's, put, a, let's put another little page here. If I just had the color B for bird as an outline, thin outline, and that is white, and that is white, and that is white, and there's the shape, the form, the B. The further I stand away, I'm not going to see the B, because everything is very light. You agree? If I color this a, a shade of gray, and I make that variant of that shade of gray, if I put the two variants very close, so in other words, this is white, this is black, this is mid-tone, and I make everything a mid-tone, and I just slightly make it a slight color, and you walk further back, you're not going to see the B. Because the tonal values are too close. There's not enough contrast. There's not enough light and dark. You agree? But if I start... Uh, 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 put and, and then I do the same with black. If I put a lot of black in and just a slight black, you're still not going to see it. It's going to all look black. But what you are going to be aware of, what you are going to be aware of, you're going to be aware of this design is very light, or there's a mid, mid color, or mid tone, or it's very dark. You can tell an image whether it's dark, light, or mid. Mid tone, mid. And we know we don't like mid tones. We don't really like mid. Why? Because mid tones doesn't create depth. Midtones tend to look bland. We don't really, we're not, we like black and white, we don't like grey. Because there's not enough contrast. Grey seems to be cool, it seems to be calm, it tends to be, be harmony. So how do you create harmony and at the same time create light and dark and depth? That's what you're going to achieve. I want to create harmony, but I want to create depth as well. So every time you want to make a design, and you're looking at your two elements, I want to create harmony, and I want to create depth. Okay. Right. So, let's, let's see how we do it. Okay. So, we take this image here of the ball. And this is our typical, this is the typical thing you'll see on the videos as well, when they describe tone. They describe tone in this way. When you first draw a drawing like a coloring book, you just see outlines. There's no tone. You just draw the outline. As soon as you put shades of a color in, or black, or even as soon as you put shading, shading is another way of describing, describing light, dark. You can call it shading, shadows. We call it shadows. We call this highlights. It's the highlight. It's the lightest part. It's the highlight. The highlight of my career. It's the highlight. It's the most strongest light. Shadows is the dark part. It's the shadows. And then in the mid, it's the mid tones or the middle colors or the mid tones. You can call it mid tones or middle colors. Or middle color. So if you take a ball and I now start putting a shade here and it gets darker 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 there and I put a little shadow area there that's very dark then on my range of tonal values that would be black this would be the mid tones and the white would be here so this is where the white would be there's the white there's the black and this is the shades of grey or the mid-tones. The rest is the mid-tones. And how you play around with the mid-tones is going to create that drawing. Now, the way I want you to see it is in, in the design part is I want you to be aware of the background. So, put another way, if I drew that circle on a background, on a shape, and I put the circle there, I'm first going to be aware of my tonal values 
in terms of layers i want you to think of it in terms of layers so what i mean by in terms of layers if you stand here and you create depth the further if you look in a room the further back in a room you can't see it it's darker the closer in the room the lighter it is because it's like my hands here i can see uh yeah, yeah but the further it tends to be darker you know what I'm saying? So something close up is light, something further is dark. You agree? Yeah. Right? And in between is like mid tone. It's neither dark. So even now, that room at the back there is dark. I can't see that drawing or that painting. I just see dark. So if I think in terms of years layers for me to get to that painting, I'm thinking of the tonal value in terms of depth and perspective. I'm not thinking of it in terms of the shape here around me that's got shading on my hand What's and it's that? right... I'm not thinking of it now, the circle, in terms of this. I'm thinking it now in terms of there's a background. So if there's a background, then this is the lightest. Here's my tonal value, so that's light. This is also part of the tonal, so it's light. Now I'm going deeper into it. So that becomes darker. And here's my dark color now. So now I'm seeing it in, as opposed to this one. Here's my shadow. I'm not so much focused on that angle. I'm focused on this angle where there's layers. Now, if you if you look at uh, 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 if you look at where light comes from, light can come from the left. It can come from the light, the front. But when it comes from the top and there's depth, wow. Now you're not getting confused. Now there's harmony. You see what I'm saying? Because this dark can clash with the dark on that side. So what I'm saying is try to think of depth as being straight in front of you. And there are layers going to the back. And that's how you're going to create depth. So if I'm looking at that bird. And I'm thinking of it in terms of a grayscale. Is that mid-tones. If the mid-tones is mid. Like grays. It's neither dark nor light, it's mid. Then I can use either black or I can use white for my word bird. Depending which one gives me the greatest depth. Now which one do you think is going to work the best? The black or the white? Let's say that mid is a mid tone. That's a mid tone. It's not, neither light nor dark. It's sort of mid, like that other one. What would work best with a mid tone? Let's see what did I use. I use black, which works. It does work, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Okay, so I'll tell you now why, why it creates harmony. Because the black and the bird is black, so they work together. If I made it white to really stand out, then the white is not going to be married with the bird. But, just not looking at that design, if I did white, white would push out the bird right to the front. Do you agree? So, my first instinct is to go for white. Why? Because in terms of the tonal values, if I'm going in the front, it's white, and if I go down to the back, it's dark. So my first instinct is, this is dark, so I'm going to go white to give that the contrast, to stand out. It's not going to be grey, and it's not going to be black. It could be black, it could be white, but you're not going to make it a mid-tone. Right? And the first instinct is, it's on top of the word picture, so it must be in the front. Okay, but again, you've got to choose between black and choose between white, whichever. But if there's a mid tone, it can work. But if your picture is very dark in the background, there's no way you're going to use black. You're going to start using a lighter color. Now, what I want you to start thinking of is this little picture that I wiped off here. What does this show you? This shows you about what we call reverse. Reverse. Funny enough, because we talk about re reverse text. So we talk about, you know when we talk about reverse text, it means it's light text on a black background. So we mostly talk about reverse text as being white text or light text on a dark background. That's reverse. 
you, you with me? So if you next time look at a, 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 a logo, most probably it's going to be on a light background, so they're going to have it in black. But if the wall is painted black, they can't make it black on black, so they're going to make it white. So there's always a relationship between the, 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 the text and the image in the background or the background in terms of is it tending to go reverse or is it tending to go normal. So if you look at that, that's normal text. Because it's black. That's normal text. Because it's black. Okay? But as soon as you have text that is light, it tends to be reverse text. You see, that's reverse text. So you can even just, when we look at text, we're also not just talking about the font of the text, but look at the logo. Is it reverse or is it not reverse? So every time we do a proposal for a client, we've got to show the logo as how it would look in reverse and how it would look as normal. You've got to show them both. Logos or text headings or logos doesn't always show just in normal, it can show re reverse as well. Even if you take Coca-Cola, there will be times when they'll put Coca-Cola as white on a red background. You've seen that? There will be times when they will put the, the word APSA, which is red, just red on a white background, but if it's a red background, they'll make it white. They'll reverse it, but it's reversed. So if you take that, that Adidas logo on your shirt, it's reverse. Because if it wasn't reversed, it would be blue, because their logo, I think, is blue on a, on a white shirt. Then it'll be blue. So you've got to be aware of normal and reverse. Why? Because this starts giving you an indication of how you're going to handle your tone. And tone is about light and dark. And the way you handle the in-between of the text and the background is when you're going to start getting the, the, the image to show harmony. So if I've chosen bird, and I've chosen an image of the bird, and I've positioned it, I've got to look at the color of my bird, and the color of my text. And I've got to marry the two. And if the whole picture is too dark, it's going to tend to be white or reverse. And if it's light or medium tone, it's most likely going to be tend to be black or dark. Normal. Right? So this normal and reverse text part depends very much on the background if the background is dominantly black or mid-tone to light. If it's mid-tone to light, text will be black. If it's dominantly to black, text will be white. You get what I'm saying? So I'm going to give you now an, uh, 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 an instruction. I'm going to go say, go and look for a picture of a bird of prey. If you've got that picture in front of you, you want to ask yourself, is it, what is the tonal value of that picture? Is it a mid-tone picture? Is it a dark picture? Or is it a light picture? Now, how many people look at pictures and the first thing that strikes in their mind is the tone of the picture? No, I'm looking at that beautiful model on that ad. I'm not worried about the tone of the picture. Hey, look. Huh? But if you're a graphic designer... You look at everything through the prism of a graphic designer. So next time I look at the design, whether I, the first instance is I like it or I don't like it. It's like hearing a song. You like it or you don't like it. Now if you start analyzing why you like it or don't like it, then I can analyze it as a designer. But many of you guys will still just be designing because it works. You're not asking yourself why does it work or what is the first thing I'm looking at. And I'm always saying to you, when you're looking at the design, there are always going to be shapes in it. So where is my text shape and where is my image shape? So whenever I look at a design, where is the text and where is the image? Oh, there's no image. But if there's no image, then the background is important. So the background could be the image, or the background is not an image. But you're always asking, where's the text, where's the image? And then, overall, is there tone in it? Is it does it give a mid-tone, does it give a dark tone, or does it give a light tone? And then I want you to think of the tones as every little image can have a little tone. But overall, if you have to start putting it in layers, because there's no layer, there's no layers there, but if I put a stripe through there, I'm going to start seeing a layer automatically. 
that's going to start thinking, I'm going to think this is the back and this is the front. I'm going to stop. If I slightly overlay the text on the picture, then I'm going to say there's the bird and the bird is there next to it. I can't really say which is, which is in the front and the back. Then the size of the bird compared to the bee tells me the bird is the back. But if they're the same size, I can't tell. But if there's a slight overlap, I can tell. So immediately, the positioning of your text and your image was, is already starting to create a type of depth. But before you even look at the depth of the two images, the bird and the text, look at the overall depth in terms of tone of the whole design. Is it light? Is it mid? Is it dark? Right, it tends to be dark. Now, how can I create more harmony by using that dark and, and, and putting the text and marrying the two by the position? So, after you've positioned and you've put it on there, now you're looking at tone. So, when I talk about color, I want to talk about uh, the use of color in terms of creating uh, depth and harmony in tomorrow's class. I'll focus a little bit more on color. But now I'm just talking about black and white tone. So take your image of your uh, 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 photograph of the bird of prey that you've had and turn it into a grayscale, black and white. Because if you turn it in, the, in, the, in a black and white grayscale, you tend to see if it is mid-tone, dark or light. Because the colors can confuse you. Why does color, why does color, why can color confuse you? Because even color has got this illusion of moving to the front and moving to the back. Just putting two colors next to each other, you're going to have the illusion of to front or back. So if I have my, if I have my circle here, and it is slightly that line is slightly behind the circle. It appears a, as if the circle is in front. You agree? But how can I make it appear that this panel is in front? By simply placing that over here and taking an edge away there. Can you see now the panel is in front and the circle is behind the panel and then you've got another color at the back. Just by how you're positioning the two. Now I'm going to show you how color can be, can be an illusion. So here's the two blocks. And remember, what, let's say one creates no depth. This one creates no depth. So there's no marriage. They're individuals. There's no harmony. I can't say this is in front and this is at the back. They're not related. Who cares? There's no harmony. There's no marriage of the two objects. But if I put this one in the middle there, but I slightly cut it off there at the bottom, then I know it's related because this one is slightly in front of that one. But if I take the next one and I make the next one the circle, but I put the line on top, but I don't get it cut off, I can cut it off, then it still looks in front of that, right? But if I don't cut it off, then that looks at the back. So depending on where you cut it off. You, you agree with me there? Right? So now you get front, middle, back. So front, middle, back. Front, light. Middle, middle. Dark, back. So I'm using the word light, highlight, shadows, back. Light, front. So we tend to want to see this as darker and this lighter. This mid-tone and this lighter. Do you agree? That's how we are expecting it to see. If we don't see that, we might think, I don't like it, I don't know why. I don't know, I don't know why I don't like it. It's because you, we are programmed, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? So, what you want to do then is, You've got to be aware of the overall tone of the color and then choose how you're going to use your colors. Now, I said to you, a color has also got the ability to push something forward to the back. So, give me a color that will push the circle to the front of all the colors. A dark color would be like that. No, light because it's pushing it to the front. You want something light, a, a, a color that is... That, that you think will push it to the front. Yellow. 
yellow. So yellow will push it to the front. You agree? Yellow and orange will put it to the front. What will pull, pull that banner to the back? What color? Blue. Okay, so you know the, the basic colors. You've got blue, red, and yellow. Then you've got green, purple, and orange. So, what would you say, Luke? Of those six colors, choose a color I want to push, put in there to make it look like it's at the back. Here's the color of the six colors. Good, good guess. Why? Because purple is, tends to be dark. Blue, purple, and green tends to be dark. Orange and yellow tends to be light. So light colors push to the front and put, put to the back. So if I had put, made that one yellow, it would appear as this one is in the front. If I had made this one blue, it would appear as if one is in the back. Yet they're not touching. But just because I made that yellow and that blue, it gives the appearance that the, the circle is in front. If I make that one blue and this band yellow, it feels like the circle is going to the back. Just purely through color. So color has also got the effect of pushing things to the back or to the front. Now how do you create harmony between the background? It's because these two tends to be backgrounds. So try to use similar colors. And this one wants to be in the front, so choose a warm color. So we talk about warm color and light color. And I don't want to go into color, but that's how you do it. But in tomorrow's lecture, we're going to see how do we mar marriage the color. So notice how I'm married, marrying the color because I'm picking it off from the background. But if this was black and white, now imagine it black and white, you would still see the word bird of prey. There will be enough contrast, there will be enough depth. You never want to have your heading and your picture so bland or mid-tone that there's no depth. That's when we call it bland. The heading and the, 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 heading and the, uh, and, and the picture must be positioned right and then there must be tonal values to create front and back for it. You with me? Now let's take the other picture. So if I turn it into black and white, it will still show all right, because these two are married. But look at how I use the yellow. I put a bit of yellow there because the yellow is in the wing. The yellow is in the word there and the yellow is spread out there. So there's like that spread of yellow. Let's look at the next picture. There's white. But there's your spreads of yellow already everywhere. So I could have brought yellow in the text to bring it in front. But I thought no. But the yellow is tinted there with a squares. So instead of making the text yellow, let's put the yellow on the squares because it's still focusing on the text and, this, and put the border yellow. So it's still got some element of yellow. I'm not saying you've got to go that creative. We don't want to go that far yet. I don't want you to think of color now. So when you get your picture that you're going to use for homework now, I want you to first place the word birds of prey next to the pictures and the right side. So we'll think of size and position. Then see how it's going to go onto the page. How big, how small. And then bear in mind when you view it, the tone. Now, if the tone is mid, do I use black or white for my heading? If the overall tone of that overall image is mid tone, for my heading, do I go black or white? I go black. I could go white, but then it will depend on the color of the eagle. You see, if the eagle is, is white, then I could say, okay, I must go white because the eagle is being pushed to the front. So I don't want to, I don't want to have the contrast too far from the, the eagle and the heading because the eagle and the heading must be married. You see, but in overall rule is white. Oh, I mean black because it's gray metal. But if it's dark, yes, you're going to have this reverse effect happening. Okay, so the only time you've got to really consider the re reverse effect is if that image is very dark. You with me? So now when I talk about the tone of it or design, I'm thinking of front, middle, back. I'm thinking of light, mid-tone, dark. 
I'm thinking of shadows, highlights. That's how I'm describing tone to you. So if I say, what is tone? You say, it's the range between black and white. That is tone. The range of black and white. And the tonal values are the range, the in-between range. So I'll talk about tone, then I must talk about tonal values. Because I'm not talking about black and white, because then it's to, I'm talking about two-tone. If I talk about monochrome tone, or monotone, or monochromatic tone, you can use either or, then I'm talking about the two colors, but not black and white, but the color and white. The color and black, then I'm talking about two colors. Okay? But now we're not going to talk about color today. We're going to, you're going to do your design thinking about black and white only. So you get your color image of the birds of prey, you turn it into black and white, you look at the tone, and you look at the image of the bird and say, hey, this tone is mid-tone or it's dark tone, and it's now pushing out. Now I'm going to put the text next to it. First of all, I'm putting the text next to it. And then I'm going to see how do I shade my, my text. So to marry the two, I'm going to make my text birds closer to the bird. So it gets married. If it's too white and the bird is too dark, it's not marrying. I've got to get the tonal values of my heading and my main image so that they marry. They are easy on the eye. Never mind if the background is dark or light or whatever. So that's how I'm determining my heading color. My heading color is determined by the bird itself. And then you want to marry the two by keeping the tone similar. Right? So the tone of the, of the, the, the text and the image, the tonal value must be similar. But the colors could be different, but the tonal value must be similar. You, you with me? And then the, the background is, if you look at the overall, overall color of the background, you want to send the background to the front. And the way you send the background to the front is by picking off on the bir actual bird what can bring both the bird to the front and the text to the front. So look at the tonal value of the bird itself. It's got a bit of white in the bird, it's got a bit of yellow in the bird, so that's bringing the bird itself to the front. So I'm going to use that yellow or that thin color that brings bringing the bird to the front, I'm going to put it in my text to bring it more to the front. Are you with me? You can only do it when you try it for yourself and see it for yourself. So I want you now to go and look for the uh, image of the bird, look at the color and everything, turn it in black and white, and then just see it as a... The heading as, I'm either going to do the heading black, or I'm going to do it white, or I'm going to do it a tone of black and white. It's going to be a tone of grey. And the tone you choose of grey is how it marries with the bird. You with me? So after looking at the shape and form, you're looking at the elements of tone. Tomorrow we'll evaluate it and we we'll look at colour a little bit further. Good. No, it's good. a good thing it's getting filmed because it's a lot. It's right. a lot. That's so why I'm putting good, it on it so that you can yeah. look at it from time to time. So the first thing to, to simplify, simplify anything, when you look at a design, you've got to look at where's the image, where's the text. And then you've got to look at how does the text and the image create harmony. Because the first thing you're going to be aware of is tone. So once you're aware of tone, you can now be aware of What's going to the front? What's creating depth? How does the size of the image and the text create harmony? Alright, any questions? So you're converting your image into a grayscale yes. to see how it's weighted. Yes. So to see how it's weighted yeah. in terms of is it mid-tone weighted, yeah. dark-tone weighted yeah. or light weighted. And but once I've got the weighting... But essentially, we're not going to be using a grayscale image, we're going to be using a full color yes, image. Yes, yes. But it's just your process that you're going through to make it easier on the eye. Yes. To see it where it's... To like, develop it further. Yeah. So now right. that we've got the tones and the yeah. positioning of our bird and our text right, yeah. we go back to the yeah, color, color picture color image, yeah. and we choose what color will now fit best to create the same. So if I had to yeah. turn this black and white image into color, what would I start seeing if I'm starting? You'll see the real color image, yes, but then yeah. how would you start seeing the heading color? You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what we're going to move towards. Okay, cool. Thanks guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching the video.
Thanks, Colin. Mm.